Hi there. In this video, I will be introducing grooving and parting operations using a lathe machine. I will show you how to set up a workpiece to part off or create grooves along the workpiece. Grooving and parting tools look rather similar. However, a parting tool can be easily identified by looking at the tool's insert. The insert has a tilted front cutting edge to facilitate pip or burr control. A grooving tool has a straight front cutting edge to facilitate in creating a rectangular cross-section groove. Check that the inserts are not chipped or broken before using them. To part a workpiece, firstly, clamp the workpiece onto the chuck. Ensure turning is completed for a smooth surface. A smooth surface allows grooving or parting operations to be done well without any interrupted cuts. Secondly, set up the parting tool on the quick change tool post and ensure the tool height is set correctly. The tool must be perpendicular to the workpiece before tightening the tool post. Thirdly, set up the machine with the correct gear ratio for the appropriate spindle speed. Bring the tool to the workpiece and switch on the machine. Set the spindle speed. The spindle speed is dependent on the workpiece material and diameter. Ensure the tool is at the correct position along the length of the workpiece before moving the parting tool into the workpiece using the cross slide. When parting, use the chip breaking technique. This means the cutter is moved out periodically to break the chips. Notice how the hand wheel is rotated to achieve chip break cutting. The inner surface is tilted due to the front cutting edge of the parting tool. As this is a large diameter workpiece, the parting tool will begin rubbing on both sides as it goes deeper into the workpiece. This rubbing action can cause high heat, poor surface finish, and reduces the lifespan of the tool. The process also gets louder. Before continuing to part deeper into the workpiece, the parting width must be increased to create clearance for the tool. The tool is retracted out of the workpiece and moved along the z-axis by 1 to 2 millimeters. Then the chip breaking technique is used again to whiten the parting width. This alternating series of cuts is continued till the remaining material is reduced significantly. Having a wide enough parting width allows good surface finish and keeps the tool from overheating. For the final series of cuts, reduce the tool feed rate. Move the tool into the part slowly. Use of coolant is encouraged to reduce the heat from the rubbing action. Take your time, do not rush the parting operation.
Then, retract the tool out of the workpiece and move it to the correct parting length. Move the tool into the workpiece slowly and resume the chip breaking technique. The part will fall off when the parting depth is large enough for it to break off. Stop the machine and move the tool away before retrieving the workpiece with a plier as it may be hot. Parting a workpiece to an accurate length can be done by zeroing the carriage handwheel's dial. Slowly move the parting tool till it touches the face of the workpiece, then zero the dial. Do not touch the compound slide after zeroing. Move the tool away from the workpiece using the carriage to prevent any scratches. Then, move the tool along the Z-axis to the correct position by reading the dial. Watch out for backlash errors. Use the chip breaking technique to start parting the workpiece. After parting for a few millimeters, increase the parting width. Use coolant as needed. To calculate the parting length from the Z-axis datum, you must add the desired workpiece length and the parting tool's width. Offsetting the parting tool's width is important as the Z-axis datum is measured on the left side of the parting tool, while the parting tool starting position is measured till the right side of the tool. A 1 mm buffer is added for facing operation after parting off, to attain a good finish and correct length. Adding the desired workpiece length, the parting tool's width, and the 1 mm of buffer gives you the parting tool's starting position along the Z-axis. Continue to increase the parting depth. Ensure chip breaking technique is used at all times, and the parting width is kept wider than the tool thickness to prevent the tool from overheating. Sometimes, the tool may not be long enough to part the entire diameter of the workpiece. Switch off the machine and move the tool post away. An alternative to parting off completely with a parting tool is to use a hacksaw. Place the hacksaw into the groove carefully. When sawing, ensure the blade is not rubbing against the sides of the workpiece. As the workpiece is almost being sawed through, stop and break the workpiece away. After parting, the workpiece surface can be machined using a facing tool to attain a good finish and correct length. First, machine away the protruding material left from parting, called pip. Face the workpiece in small increments. To facilitate a good finish facing, keep the feed rate low.
Parting to length can also be done for small components. Place the parting tool at the end of the workpiece and zero the carriage handwheel's dial. Ensure the tool is perpendicular and use the chip breaking technique. As the workpiece diameter is small, there is no need to increase the parting width. As the parting depth increases, reduce the depth of cut and feed rate. The part will fall off when the parting depth is large enough for it to break off. Stop the machine and move the tool away before retrieving the workpiece with a plier as it may be hot. After parting, the workpiece surface can be machined using a facing tool to attain a good finish and correct length. When parting is done for a longer workpiece, the workpiece must be supported by a center. Ensure the workpiece has a pilot hole. Slide the tailstock fitted with a center to the workpiece. Lock the tailstock in position. Extend the barrel and lock it in position. Similar to the previous examples, ensure the tool is perpendicular and use the chip breaking technique. If the workpiece diameter is small, there is no need to increase the parting width. As the parting depth increases, reduce the depth of cut and feed rate. As the workpiece is supported by the center, it may not fall off after parting. Stop the machine and retract the tool. As the workpiece may be hot, use a long nose plier to hold the workpiece while retracting the center. Similar to setting up the parting tool, the grooving tool must be perpendicular to the workpiece. To machine a groove at the necessary location, the carriage handwheel's dial must be zeroed when the tool is at the face of the workpiece. Then move the tool along the Z-axis 
and read the dial to correctly position the grooving tool. Switch on the machine and feed the tool into the workpiece. Use chip breaking to break away the chips. If the workpiece is small, have a slow feed rate and low depth of cut to prevent bending the workpiece. The depth of the groove can be measured with a vernier caliper or use the cross slide dial to measure the tool's change in position. If the groove needs to be wider than the tool's width, retract the tool, move it along the Z-axis, and repeat the process. Grooves are essential when creating external screw threads, as they allow the threads to be fully formed without defects. The demonstrations you saw are typical grooving and parting operations for various workpiece sizes. Ensure you are aware of the cutting speed required for the workpiece material and size. Cutting speeds for aluminium and steel are very different, and using the correct speeds will improve your machining time and quality. As grooving is a type of oblique cutting, and parting does not support good chip evacuation, and has higher cutting forces, it is advisable to carry out these processes with a slower feed rate and lower depth of cut. Speak with an SP staff if you are grooving or parting steel or some other unique workpieces.